the cell phone. Where would we be without them? They help us in so many ways. Instant communication with people everywhere. Access to our email, giving us directions, organizing our lives and calendars, warning us of emergencies. Frankly, for most of us, it would be hard, virtually impossible to detach from our cell phones because they've indeed become the way we make contact with virtually everyone and every aspect of our lives. But therein lies the rub. Has the smartphone really made us any smarter, or has it replaced our sense of self and intelligence with something else? Is it harming our interpersonal relationships and shortening our attention spans? Is it becoming an addiction? Might our devices be endangering us in ways we've still yet to comprehend? MIT scholar Sherry Turkle shares the view of French philosopher Jean Baudrillard that in some respects, this technology is leading us away from ourselves. Our little devices, those little devices in our pockets, are so psychologically powerful that they don't only change what we do, they change who we are. And her point of view is now being echoed, even in popular culture. We sit at home on our computers, measuring self-worth by numbers of followers and likes. Ignoring those who actually love us, it seems we'd rather write an angry post and talk to someone who might actually hug us. Am I bugging? You tell me. Baylor University professor James Roberts' research demonstrates how cell phones are using up more and more of our free time. Female college students are now averaging 10 hours per day on their cell phones. Males, eight. A typical college student checks their cell phone close to 50 times each day. Robert's study shows 60% of college students now believe they may be addicted to their cell phone. A 2015 focus group at Widener University illustrates the power of the technology. This young woman said she'd not give up her cell phone for just three days, even if offered ten thousand dollars for doing so. I don't know. Like I personally would never give up my phone for even three hours, let alone three days, because I just feel like um, I've become so dependent on my phone. Robert's research also suggests cell phone use is lowering academic performance. Many students can't stay off their cell phones during class because staying away from them is just too scary. Cell phone use appears to be changing the way our brains process information. Our brains simply can't stay focused on too many things at once. If you have multiple external goals, like uh, checking an email, monitoring a text, um, planning something that you're going to do later, working on a, a report that's due that, that afternoon, then what you're doing is your attentional network is switching between all of those tasks. We're really moving the attentional network that only has the capacity to direct its full resources at one task to each of them. And with each of those switches, there is a performance cost. Um, we call it a cost that, uh, that degrades the uh, the performance from what might be an optimal level if it had a sustained focus attention. Pulitzer Prize winning reporter for the New York Times Matt Richtel examines the broader implications in his 2014 bestseller A Deadly Wandering. It is a device that on its face provides entertainment, information, communications, but it is so it, it is it is wired into us so deeply that it is working on a much more primitive level than that, on the most deep social and neurochemical levels. While the question of whether or not cell phone use is an addiction or merely a learned habitual pattern may be a matter of nuance, the reality is that we are increasingly finding our lives more and more tied to these devices, with some profound consequences. Initial research from around the world points to potential difficulties stemming from cell phone dependency conflicts in marital and romantic relationships, depression, a demise in academic performance, and of course, a reduction in safety. A 2012 report showed that texting and walking accidents quadrupled in the seven years surveyed, and the U.S. National Safety Council estimates that about one out of five crashes results from talking on a phone while driving. And there's not much difference between those who hold their phones and those who drive while talking via Bluetooth device. Texting and driving results in another 6% of the accidents. And about 6,000 people are killed each year in the U.S. when cell phones are used while driving. 
J.C. Good was on her way home from her college graduation in 2008 when a texting and driving accident altered the course of her life. You know, my brother came after work and I said, Jared, what's going on? Why aren't mom and dad coming to visit me on my birthday? And he explained that I was, I was in a car wreck and mom and dad were in the same car as me and neither of them made it out. I couldn't live without my parents. They couldn't be gone. JC and her husband opted to do something rather than just wallow in the pain. Today, the couple talks to students and corporations on a regular basis. These crashes affect entire communities, and at the rate it's going, you know, there, there's not going to be a community left untouched. It never stops hurting. It never hurts less. But I guess the thing that does make it easier is that you get used to how it feels. You know, every now and again I'll have a day that I'll think, oh, I need to call mom. But that doesn't happen so much. You know, that used to happen every couple of days. Now it only happens every couple of months. So can you walk into the woods or enjoy an ocean view without one of these at your side? Have you ever had to slam on your brakes just because you looked down at this for just the wrong moment? Can you go a day without one of these at your side without feeling totally disconnected from the world? Each new technology is wonderful, but comes with unintended consequences. With a smartphone, we're finding those consequences can be much more profound and can be having the effect of changing our uniquely human assets and qualities. In the documentary plan for the next year, we hope to address these many issues and questions. We plan to follow four 19-year-old students around the world and see the impact of these tiny devices on their lives for the good and the bad. I'm asking for your help. These questions are profound and incredibly important. Please consider helping us address them. There are no easy solutions, no simple answers. But together, through our mutual reflection, we can find a way to once again turn these devices into our servants, not our masters. I'm Dwight Worth Palmeyer.